Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to this week's video. We got a pretty good one for you. After we did that burr scope mount, I wanted to come back out here to the garage and do something that's a little more season specific. Turkey season's coming up, it's late February, and we're trying to get some things checked off the list that need to be done. So this year, I'm going to be changing guns. I'm going from a 12 gauge to a 20, and I'm going to be hunting with this Mossberg 20. I've got a couple Burrist Fast Fire red dot sights here. I'm making the conversion. I'm going to a red dot on my turkey gun this year. And then I have a, a second Fast Fire, but this one is mounted on a speed bead. You can see here the sights on top. And if you take away the sight, the speed bead mount is this part on the bottom. They come separate. I've already mounted this one. And I'm going to be putting this speed bead and fast fire on this SX3. This is my waterfowl gun. Waterfowl season's over, but I want to get this done. Uh, a lot of guys, I think, are using these speed beads for turkey guns, which is a great option. But with me going to a 20 this year, the speed bead mount isn't out from Burris yet. Hopefully they'll be making some more 20 gauge options. So I've gone with a Picatinny rail that you can already see is mounted here. That's real easy. Picatinny lays right on top. You lay in some Loctite and your screws are in. But we're gonna take you through the process of getting the speed bead mount on today. And you'll see how it lays with the fast fire on top. And then I'm gonna take you through unboxing this new fast fire and laying on top of this Mossberg 20, which is super easy. In the packaging, you open it up, it comes like this. You have your sight, battery, uh, your little screwdriver here, and the cover for it. The only difference between these two things is that with the speed bead, you don't need this part right here, which what is what allows you to lay this right on top of this Picatinny rail. I mean, it's really almost that simple. We'll take you through step by step. Uh, but a couple quick and easy things to uh, hopefully get you a little more game this spring for me and this fall for me with waterfowl. Uh, I think there's a lot of guys, maybe more purists with shotguns and wing shooting, particularly with waterfowl, that would abhor the idea of this red dot sight. But for me, I feel like I have a little cross-eyed dominance and that sometimes when I bring the gun up, and I bring that vent rib in front of my left eye, my right eye starts to take over, and I've missed some shots pretty bad. I notice I'm particularly better shot when I close my left eye and, and look down the rib with solely my left. I don't think you're supposed to do that. I don't know. I've never taken too many shooting lessons. I, I think you're just supposed to point and shoot. You're not aiming. But sometimes my shots are so far off that I think the speed bead and the fast fire red dot sight is going to just help me hit more of what I'm aiming at. So let's go through the process. First things first, we're going to do the speed bead fast fire on this SX3. So guns clear, actions open. We're going to lay this down. You don't need too many tools to get this done. you got to have a screwdriver. It goes in here. You're going to take your, butt, your uh, recoil pad off. Once you get down through the recoil pad, you have a half inch piece on a socket and you're going to take the screw out and that's going to allow this whole rear stock to come off and you'll just see the buffer tube on here. The speed bead's just going to lay right on top of that. Okay, our recoil pad's off. You can see the screws there. I take our socket, there's a nut right in the back, if you can see there, there's a nut, it sits right on top. This part's pretty easy, the recoil pad always gives me trouble because <clears throat> you're fighting with the rubber part of the pad, okay? Try to lift up gently, the nut wants to sit on top of there, there's another little metal plate in there that can get flipped around, so be careful with that. Lay this down gently. And then a very key part, if you've shimmed your gun, if you've changed the shims on this, you gotta take it off and remember which way it was, because if you flip it, you're gonna shim your gun in an opposite direction. One of the beautiful things now about many of the guns that come out is they come up with multiple plastic shims, so you can really fit it to yourself. So you're left here with the buffer tube, the speed bead, like I said, comes without the fast fire sight on it, but I've already mounted mine, and it simply just slides down right on top of this. Let's see if it fits perfectly there. 
then you're going to take that plastic shim and lay that on top of the sight. The shim goes on top of the speed bead mount and between the receiver, not the other way. It doesn't go receiver, shim, and then speed bead. So you're making a little sandwich here, remembering which way I brought it off. That sits right on, and all you do now is bring the stock back on top. Okay, those are sitting on top. You're going to reseat that nut on top of the screw that's on the back end of the buffer tube. Reseat your stock like this, okay? So our rear stock's back on, I've screwed the nut on. All I have to do is reassemble my recoil pad here. Below the speed bead, or below the fast fire, in the speed bead there's a screw that's a set screw. So you tighten that down onto the rear end of your stock. The screw is gonna be right here underneath the sight. So you tighten that down so you eliminate all your play. This is really tight and in place. You screw the sight on. When I put my fast fire sight on, I'm not using any blue Loctite. I don't believe that's advised. I wouldn't do it. Once you get this in place, we'll turn the sight on. All you have to do is lay your red bead right on top of the front bead of your shotgun. And it should be on as long as your shotgun's on. But one of the nice parts about this is that if your shotgun is shooting to the left or the right, it doesn't quite pattern right. I don't ever really know how people got around that before except for adjusting the front bead. With this, you can just adjust the red bead, uh, the red dot and you're, you're perfect, you're gonna be on. So we're gonna put that on top of the front bead of this. We're gonna go out and confirm the pattern, but that's all that this looks like. All I gotta do is put the recoil pad on, take a couple shots, confirm that we're on, and we're good to go. So that's the SX3. Next, super easy, is this Mossberg 20. I'm gonna finish up this SX3, and we'll get to that. Okay, new day, we're done with that speed bead mount. Um, back out here in the garage a second day and this one's gonna be real short. We're gonna finish up this video. I'm gonna show you how to put this fast fire on an existing Picatinny rail mount. This is gonna be my turkey gun for this year. Like I said, I'm really excited about it. Uh, been working on the turkey intro for this year and you know, warm weather's coming and the good stuff is just over the horizon. <clears throat> so you're gonna see in your package here, it's pretty simple and laid out. We're gonna initially mount this to the Picatinny rail, then the sight on top of that. This is just your plastic cover. Comes with a little wrench for windage and elevation adjustments. And then a couple different screws here, including an extra, which is intelligent. And then the battery, so we'll put that in last. So it's just a matter of taking this out. It's a simple thumb set screw that we're gonna add some blue Loctite to this part and I am going to mount mine out towards the end of my shotgun. Now most people, and I don't know why exactly, but most people will advise that you take any red dot sight and seat it towards the end of any mount that you have. Uh, I don't know the exact reasons for that. You can mess around with that yourselves to see what fits best for you. But for this mount, I am just following popular example. And I am not going to use the thread locker when I mount the red dot sight. Uh, I've been advised not to just because the way that it seats. Now these, this might be okay to do, but with the speed bead mount, it came with a different style of screw. So this one, you might want to use that. I'm gonna look into that. I might go back and add some blue Loctite here. But on the speed bead, it had a, a seated lock washer. Uh, so you're not gonna to wanna to put that in. So we've got that tight. Next part's just the red dot. So our sight is on. Oh, 
all we have to do is go in and add the battery. Okay, battery's in, sight is on. With a couple clicks, you can adjust the intensity of your red dot. So last step is to get this thing out to the range and get it on. Now you'll notice that when it's on a rail, the sight is obviously riding a little higher than the bead. So even if the shotgun is on, I don't know that I can just simply put the red dot on top of the bead and I'll be close. But with the speed bead, the sight here is sitting at a much lower angle. It's much more natural of a cheek weld than this where I'm sitting a little bit higher. So I'm definitely gonna have to verify that. I know the bead on my SX3 is on. It's not off left or right. So I put that red dot right on top of the bead and I should be pretty good. We'll pattern that again. We'll pattern this and we'll be ready to go. So that's the new Burst Fast Fire 3 on my shotgun. It's been out for a little while. It's very durable, has a great reputation, and we'll know what you uh, we'll let you know what we think about it as we go along this spring.